So today we're going to be talking about the horrific crimes of Todd Colehep. So between 2003 and 2016, former South Carolina realtor Todd Colehep unalived at least seven people, burying a few of them in his backyard. Todd was caught after police traced the cell phone signal of a missing woman to his property where they found her chained by her neck in a garage. However, most disturbing of all is that after he was arrested, police found that Todd would order a lot of his weapons off Amazon, and then after he got them and used them to unalive his victims, he would actually go back and leave a review rating them for how well they worked. Some of his reviews even included reviewing a shovel and about how well it worked and digging a hole for multiple bodies, and even reviewing padlocks and how well they worked and keeping people locked in shipping containers. Todd was found guilty of all the deaths, and he is currently serving life in prison. So let's go over some of the Amazon reviews left by Todd Colehep. So this is a review for a shovel, which says, Keeping a car for when you have to hide the bodies and you left the full size at home does not come with a human, which would have been nice. This one for a padlock, which says solid lock, have five on a shipping container, won't stop them, but sure will slow them down till they are too old to care. And his last victim was found chained up by the neck in a shipping container. One for a chainsaw says, works excellent. Getting the neighbor to stand still while you chase him with it is hard enough without having an easy to use chainsaw. This one's true about him. It's for a taser that says it's blacker than my soul and priced right. And this one's honestly probably the most disturbing. It's for a knife and it says, haven't stabbed anyone yet, yet, but I am keeping the dream alive. And when I do, it will be with a quality tool like this. Heartbreaking news out of Colorado. Last Friday, Quaylen Campbell texted his aunt happy birthday, and not much longer after that, he texted his wife and said 911, send help, and he sent her a picture of a random man in his passenger seat of his car. Quaylen was driving his work car down a busy street in Colorado Springs when a random man jumped in his car with a gun. Off immediately dials 911 and gets in her car and goes to where he is at. It takes her 45 minutes to reach him and... When she gets there, she sees that police never even showed up yet. This poor woman found her husband's body. The police headquarters was on the same road as Qualen. It's been in father, Quaylen Campbell killed in Colorado. Police there are now telling the family that detectives are investigating why no officers showed up in time to help Campbell even after his wife called 911. Campbell's family in tears telling our John Sherry they can only wonder what if. Happy One moment he is texting his aunt in Atlanta, happy birthday. Love you. Then suddenly, Quaylen Campbell, who is in his work vehicle on this busy stretch of road in Colorado Springs, where he and his wife and two daughters live now, is texting his wife to call 911. That's Quaylen's arm in the foreground. And sitting next to him in the front passenger seat, a gunman he does not know who had just jumped into the car. Quaylen texting his wife for help, trying not to let the gunman see that he's texting. Talia Campbell, immediately immediately calls 911 and starts to drive to get to Quaylen. It takes her more than 45 minutes to get to him. And when she arrives, she sees that no police had ever shown up. She's the one who discovers Quaylen's body inside the vehicle, shot to death. Police say the gunman, a stranger, had killed Quaylen and then killed himself. It's hard. Quaylen's cousin in Fairburn, Kendra Farmer. And I feel like if they would have made it, he probably would have survived. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Quaylen's aunts, Shedra Graham and Bernice Graham. But to think somebody could have helped him, and nobody showed up. Nobody deserves that. Family attorney Harry Daniels from Atlanta says police have told him that it was a random crime. The gunman, a transient, Daniels says, with an extensive criminal record. And now Daniels says police are investigating themselves about why it took officers so long to respond to that 911 call. Quaylen's family holding on to him. Quaylen was a gentle giant. Aching for answers as much as they ache in their hearts for him. He was the best father ever. In fair Breaking news, a family in Las Vegas is claiming that something crashed into their backyard and what was inside of it was non-human. My last video has the police body cam footage and the 911 call, but I just found a video on YouTube and it is from one of the family members explaining everything that happened that night. I might have to put it in two parts because it's a little long, but he shows ring footage and the sound is so freaking loud, y'all. I'm gonna try to explain the best of my abilities. This is not a conspiracy theory. I'm not making this story out for cloud or fame. I just want to tell you what happened to me and my family. And I know some people are not going to believe this, but each person is different. So this is what happened to me. Keep in mind, 
this is midnight and I'm fixing a truck in my backyard. At this point, I'm only with my brother and I hear something fall from the sky. I turn around, the only thing I, I see is a big light falling from the sky and moments after, I feel a big impact and a, and a bang, sort of like a big impact fall. And me and my brother looked at each other and we were scared, but, the, but when the impact happened, it was sort of like a shock wave, like an out of body experience. So to say, when I tried to look at the object, it was all blurry, not my vision, but only the backyard area. And I hear thousands of footsteps around me and maybe a couple seconds later, the blurriness was gone. And here's, here's the footage of the body, the police officer's body cam. And here's the object I'm the object I'm referring to, the light. Video. Here's a ring camera video. You can hear the bang. This is around the neighborhood. So here's the video. So when that happened, the only thing I can see in the backyard is a tall creature, probably around eight, 10 feet tall, very thin. So I called my dad, he went to the backyard and he saw the same thing, the same creature I saw. He told me to go inside the house. At this point, we all freaking out, me and my family. And here's the video where we were in the backyard area. You can see, you cannot see it too good, but on camera, but it's there. Here's the video. <laughs> Moments after the video, me and my brother went to go pick up my tools. Then my brother calls me and he told me, he told me shakingly, look behind the forklift. So I look, keep in mind I'm facing the forklift and then I see the alien creature. So when I saw it, it was a tall, skinny, lengthy creature. He was a gray, greenish color. And when I looked at it in the eyes, my body just froze. I spent two days in a Texas prison with a girl who orchestrated the murders of her entire family. I've talked before about the impact that that encounter's had on me, but today I actually just want to get into the case, the true crime story of Aaron Caffey. Erin Caffey was the oldest daughter of a devout Christian family in Alba, Texas, and she was working as a car hop at Sonic when she met 18-year-old Charlie Wilkinson. Erin was only 16 at the time, but whenever she met Charlie, the two instantly became infatuated. It became very serious very quickly. They were madly head over heels in love with each other, and Charlie even gave Erin a promise ring saying that he wanted to marry her when she was old enough. Now, when Erin introduced Charlie to her parents, Terry and Penny, her parents immediately had red flags and bells and whistles going off saying there was just something off about Charlie. Terry and Penny were very protective of Erin, obviously, and they tried to keep the couple apart, tried to make it hard for them to see each other, talk to each other, but they always managed to find a way to be together. And finally, it all came to a head and there was a breaking point where Terry put his foot down and insisted that the two absolutely unequivocally stop seeing one another, that this is it, this is the end, you two are done. And surprisingly, the couple very quietly agreed. The two didn't have an outburst. Aaron didn't fight back or argue. They just simply said, okay. This should have been a huge red flag, but unfortunately it wasn't. Unbeknownst to her parents, Aaron had actually mentioned to multiple friends and people at school that she wanted her parents dead. And when her parents laid down the law and forbid her to see Charlie, this was the last straw and she eventually convinced Charlie, along with two other of her friends, that it was time to kill her parents. Hours before they were brutally attacked and murdered, the Caffey family was having a pillow fight, including Erin. Erin and her two little brothers and her parents were all giggling and laughing, having just a good family time before bed. And all the while that Erin's participating in this, she knows that in just a few hours, her boyfriend and an accomplice are going to sneak into the house and put an end to everyone. And later that night, Aaron did sit in the car while Charlie Wilkinson and his friend Charles Wade snuck into the Caffey house and proceeded to brutally murder Penny Caffey, Matthew Caffey, and Tyler Caffey. 
The two boys then set the house on fire and fled the scene. The father, Terry Caffey, miraculously survived and crawled out a window and proceeded to crawl for the next hour to get to a neighbor's house to call for help. Aaron is said to have celebrated and high-fived the boys, saying that was effing awesome. Glad that's over with. Because in her eyes, she was free. It was over. They could now live happily ever after. Aaron and her accomplices were all convicted of three counts of capital murder. Terry, the father, has since forgiven all of the murderers, including his daughter, and he continues to have a relationship with Aaron to this day. Gloria Trevi has hired Camille Vasquez to defend her in trial against the latest case of S.A. against her. And here's the full story behind these cases of S.A. filed against Gloria Trevi throughout her career. I just want to preface this by saying I know Gloria Trevi has a lot of fans. I'm not saying anything that isn't already out there. Don't shoot the messenger. This is just to provide some background for those who don't know ahead of the new trial. Gloria Trevi's music career began when she was 16 years old after meeting music producer Sergio Andrade who was 28 at the time. He became her mentor and producer and the two released numerous successful albums together throughout the 1980s and 90s. That all changed in 1999, when a woman by the name of Aileen Hernandez released a book called La Gloria por el Infierno, where she alleged that Gloria Trevi and Sergio Andrade coerced her and other minor girls into an SEX cult with promises of a music career. She alleged that Gloria Trevi acted as a recruiter for Sergio Andrade, gathering young girls who wanted to be famous singers, but then would ask them to audition for Sergio without their clothes on or would tell them that they needed to do whatever Sergio wanted to get the music career that they dreamed of. And that once they met Sergio Andrade, they weren't allowed to leave. They weren't allowed to see their families. They had to live with him and they never saw the music careers that they were promised. After the book was released, numerous women came forward with their stories and all were minors at the time of the events. Gloria Trevi and Sergio Andrade then went on the run from police with other minor girls in Brazil but were eventually caught by Brazilian authorities. She spent four years in prison where she gave birth to Sergio's son and Sergio spent five. Gloria moved on as we know and remarried. In 2016, Gloria and her new husband faced a new lawsuit from a maid said that Gloria and her husband brought her from Mexico to the U.S. to work in her house and got her a visa. However, she alleges that she was forced to work 120 hours per week in the house and was paid $300 bi-weekly, way less than minimum wage. She also alleges that Gloria and her husband took her visa and her passport so that she couldn't leave and find work elsewhere. The case was settled out of court. And now, in December of 2022, two women filed a lawsuit about the SEX cult in the 90s against Gloria and Sergio. They were 13 and 15 at the time that it happened, and the reason they were able to file a lawsuit is because California recently lifted its statute of limitations for childhood essay. And they allege the same thing about these two that has always been alleged. The plaintiffs remain anonymous as they filed the case under Jane Doe 1 and Jane Doe 2. And Gloria Trevi has hired Camille Vasquez of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard fame to represent her in court. Although no trial date has been set yet. Gloria Trevi has remained firm in her stance that she is a victim too in all of this. Here's part one of the body cam footage of the supposed aliens in the backyard in Las Vegas. And if you don't know this, a police officer in that unit saw something fall from the sky. So these police officers on the body cam kind of believe what these people say. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. No feet, no clothes, green green colored men uh not human with uh like the eyes were glowing and they did not it was not a human being so. did you see it huh? did you see it yeah me and her side what'd you see it was like a it was like a big creature a big creature yeah like around 10 feet tall because i'm not going to bs you guys one of my partners said they saw something fall out of the sky too so that's yeah. why i'm kind of curious did you see anything they land see, in your backyard or they see like a big double they say they see like a big uh like a big can we go the, 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 the back you can see i see a cat over there <laughs> do you have cameras one camera but it sounds the uh did you see it? No. I'm kind of curious now. I want to. I want to know if there's aliens. I was with the iPhone. I say, let me. I, I want to. It was like very big. Look at this boy. Where did you? Where did they go? Well, they say that. I'm gonna show you. Do you have a dirt backyard? Can you yeah, show me if okay. there's a... And I'm sorry, did you see them go anywhere? No. No? You didn't? You saw, did they probably go that way? No. 
Hey, did you guys... Hey, this might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? Yeah. We got a call, and one of my partners actually said that they saw it too. So, if you happen to see any, uh, like, I'm not BSing you. Video if you see any, footage? No, like, if you see any, like, little, well, not yeah, little in this couple, case. Um, they're, they're claiming down, down uh, eight to nine foot tall green beings that were in their backyard. Sounds crazy, but you never know. Nine feet, no clothes, green, green colored men, uh, not. So this is part two of the body cam footage of the supposed aliens that crashed in somebody's backyard in Las Vegas. Now people are asking for a crash site or a landing site. This is supposedly the crashing site or the landing site. Now don't get me wrong, if it was a crashing site, you'd think there would be more impact to the ground, the dirt, everything. Especially if they caught that sound on the ring camera footage. Now let me get you to the body cam footage, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Your neighbor, your fine neighbors over here. Uh, but again, I would normally discount it as probably not These real. Neighbors right here. Yes, uh, I would normally discount it as nothing. However, um, seeing as one of my partners said they saw it too, only reason I'm actually investigating it further. So if you guys see anything, especially in your backyard, please call 911. We'll come over, okay? All we just right. we're, it might, right. and we're hoping that it's maybe just some kids pranking or doing something stupid. They said they saw some fall from the sky. They checked their backyard and they saw something with uh, like eight to nine feet, no clothes, green, green colored men, uh, not human, with uh, like the eyes were glowing and they did not. It was not a human being. So, yeah. Uh, just, um, what's up? Yeah, there's multiple people in this home, so we already checked, huh? Uh, more than one. So if you see anything, just uh, give us a call, okay? Hope you have a good night. Take care. Your neighbors are still going around looking, so. Did you guys have, I'm sorry, no surveillance, no video? The camera don't belong to us. That's from the company camera. The one on the post. The landlord got a camera on the post here. Over here, I'll show you. Well, they don't have access to it. Okay. The landlord got a camera on the post here. Over here, I'll show you. Well, they don't have access to it. They don't have access to it. Okay. Access to it. Yeah, like I said, we'll we'll ATL the area and we'll we'll be around here for the night. I'm going to the hotel, man. Yeah. I don't blame you. All right, man. We appreciate you calling. Give us a call. I wanted to find some aliens. Well, hey, if those nine foot beings come back into your backyard, you call the police and we'll come back here. Okay? Yeah. Things come back, don't call us, all right? Deal with it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't dealing with that. Somebody call NASA, tell them stop it. I'll drive by and wave at you guys. You're on your own, bro. All right, take care, guys. Have a good one. All right, so let's just regroup over here, okay? Yeah. Going around and around. Yes, go. I told my neighbor what we saw. He's like, no way. <laughs> He's like, get the security cameras. I gotta see. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He told me enough. Okay, uh, police uh, officer. Before that or after that, she saw. Yeah, we we were on a call by the target right down there. Uh, um, and the bonds, and she saw what she thought was a shooting star fly in the sky. She saw something. I don't believe in these things. I don't believe, but 
Mom, I swear to God, so we're not putting God in peace, you know. But I don't see. Well, no, I, I don't. I, I'm not. I mean, I believe stuff. I don't know, but listening, listening to their stories, like I'm back there with like chills on my arms. Yeah, like yeah. it's creepy. You guys got the chills? Yeah. <laughs> it's weird, bro. Why am I the only one who's like okay? It's weird. So just the fact that our partner saw something at the same exact time. The neighbors are still going around looking, so. I don't know. Did you guys have, I'm sorry, no surveillance, no video? The cameras don't belong to us. That's when the company comes out. On the post, one of the posts. There's one back there, but there's another camera on the post here. Over here, I'll show you. Yeah, the landlord has it, so they don't have access to it. So the alleged reason why Sheila and Rachel ended Skylar's life was because they didn't want to be friends with her. But the real reason that they ended her life was because the two of them, Rachel and Sheila, were in a romantic relationship and Skylar was the only person that knew about it and they wanted to keep their secret safe, so they decided to end her life. The crazy part is, the second Skylar went missing, there were rumors going around Morgantown that Sheila and Rachel were in a romantic relationship and that's why they got rid of Skylar. Throughout the entire case, they stuck to the story that they just didn't like Skylar anymore. Meanwhile, everybody knew that they were together. The past 10 years that they've been in jail, They've stuck to that. They've stuck to the, oh, we just didn't like her anymore. But Rachel was just eligible for parole about a month ago, two months ago. And she came out and she said that her and Sheila were in a romantic relationship. And she finally exposed the truth. And in five years, Rachel's going to get out of prison. And there's nothing I don't think anybody can do about it. And it's just not fair that they're still here and Skylar's not. Thank you.